Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Jason Tucker, and this is WP Water Cooler, episode number 234. Today's topic is WordPress e-commerce optimizing WooCommerce. Let's go around the room real quick, get everyone introduced. Bob, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, I'm Bob Dunn. I am co-organizer of the Seattle WooCommerce Meetup, and I also host a podcast called the WP E-Commerce Show. Nice. Good to have you on. How about you, hey. George? I am George Stefanis. You may or may not recognize me without the beard. Uh, I work on the Jetpack team at Automatic. I get to build shiny things, and I am a co-organizer for the local Lancaster, Pennsylvania community. Sweet. Good to have you on. Mr. Cosper, how about you? Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Jason Cosper. I'm the developer advocate over at WP Engine, and since George has shaved his beard off, I'm doing all of the beard work for the podcast today. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Kevin, how about you? Uh, yeah, I'm Kevin Killingsworth. I'm on the WooCommerce core development team at Automatic, um, and I am active in the Kansas City area uh, with the uh, WordPress meetup and that sort of stuff. Um, I'm also trying to help out with the beard situation. Nice. Good job. Sarah, how about you? Hello, I'm Sarah Weefald. I'm the project manager at Zeke Interactive. I also facilitate the OC WordPress design meetup first Monday of the month, except for in June when I will be out of town. Uh, and I'm making up for the hair that George uh, shaved from his face by putting it on the rest of my head. Good job. Holding it down. <laughs> How about you say? Um, I have lots of hair. Uh, that's all I got. No, I'm Say Reed. I make WordPress, teach WordPress, preach WordPress. That's Say Reed. Me down all the things. I would you, Steve? <laughs> hey, Steve. Like I'm the weatherman all of a sudden. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tell uh, us how it is. Yeah, I am. Uh, I'm Steve Zengit. I am the founder of Zeke Interactive, and I run the OC WordPress Meetup. And I'm also the lead organizer of WordCamp Orange County, which will be four weeks from tomorrow. And now in traffic, I'm Jason Tucker. You can find me over at Jason Tucker on Twitter, and my blog is jasontucker.blog. And I also run a um, WordPress meetup at Whittier WP. All right, folks. So let's talk a little bit about this WooCommerce thing. We apparently we have a couple people that actually know what they're talking about on on here, and I'm Which excited. Which is so rare for the water cooler, right? <laughs> yeah, it's weird. So. Let's talk a little bit about the optimizing of WooCommerce. You know, Steve writes this blog post about how to optimize WooCommerce, and I go, whoa, wait one second here. Steve loaded up a WordPress site, and then he wrote a blog post, and then he hit publish. We have to talk about this, because this is the only time he ever writes anything, is something like this. So Steve, define a little bit about this uh, optimizing of the WooCommerce. What? Yeah. <laughs> you read the first. Read the first sentence of your blog post, my friend. Is that I'm, I missed the topic? Is that what we're talking about today? <laughs> That's um, the topic today. Thanks. Um, uh, so uh, yes, I felt this was important, and so I wrote this blog post. That's all I got. Would you like me to read? <laughs> would you like me to read the first sentence of your blog? Um, you can read. No, I'm just. I'm. I'm. I'm just. No, you. Yeah, go ahead. So the reality when it comes to your WooCommerce store, <laughs> that you might notice that over time, it is getting slower and slower. I, you're literally going to read it? I like do. that, though, too. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I want to try. I want to try. I mean, like ghost the reality you. of your WordPress WooCommerce site. Sorry. <laughs> So what are the what are the problems that people are facing regarding um, WooCommerce not being optimized? Like what are what are the issues that um, that we're seeing out there that we need to worry about when running a WooCommerce site? You see, what just you like Ricky Bob? Bobby, we really want to go fast. Yeah, and and so so like anything with with WordPress, right? If you're just if you set up WooCommerce and you set up a, a store and you're selling a few items, you know, you're you're just a hobbyist or a small business. You're not going to notice anything, right? Your your WordPress site most likely is going to is going to function fine, and that's true of anything in WordPress, right? So it's also true of your posts, right? If you post like I do once a year, right, it's not it's not going to slow down anytime soon. But you know, at Zeek, we deal with people who are uh, with, with clients who are have hundreds of thousands of posts inside of their WordPress site, or or lots and lots of products, and and once you start to get into those that that scale, um, things can slow down, right? And, and if it left unattended, uh, your, your WordPress site can come to a crawl. Sounds about right. 
What about, what's, what about some of the experts here that we have on the show? What, what are you thinking, Bob? Um, well, I think, but Steve, I did read your post. I saw everybody tweet about it since you had finally done <laughs> post. And um, anyway, <laughs> it was, no, it was really good at, at hosting. One of the things that I find that kind of beyond that is that a lot of people start with WooCommerce, they have a certain thing going, and they start adding plugins and extensions, and they pay for some of those. And then as they grow or change, they start finding that those extensions they don't need, but some of them think, oh, cool, you know, I spent $200 on this sucker. So they find some odd little way to use it, keep it in there, add more for their new products or whatever new features they need or new functionality, and they seem to collect them. And some of them just don't want to get rid of them because they're kind of cool, they paid for them, and I want to keep utilizing it where in a lot of cases they don't need it they could do it some other way. One of the things that I would add to that as well is that, you know, yeah, a lot of people start out with WooCommerce. They maybe have like, you know, 10 to 12 products that they've started and then their business starts to scale and they have more and more products. And then in order for people to find those products, they have to utilize search. And then they all become all kinds of various uh, code issues. Um, you know, just a lot of queries hitting the database that, you know, it wasn't necessarily built to do quickly. I don't know what you're talking about, Sarah. WordPress search is just great. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. There has never been anything wrong with it. Uh, it is just a fantastic, uh, easy, wonderful thing to use. And uh, I will not sit here and listen to you slander how <laughs> WordPress search can be so unwieldy. So you're saying that when they well, made Elastic Press, they were kind of like, you know, we don't really need to make this, but we should probably make it just, just, just to see what it does, as a right? Thought experiment to see what can happen. I mean, it's it, the way that WordPress search isn't wrong and it isn't bad. It just may not necessarily work for all situations. Not at scale. Well, well and said. it's constrained by the technologies that it's built on. I mean, there's only so much you can really do to build a scalable, efficient search on a MySQL database. Right. Whoa, wow. And then to get technical for a second, you know, when you <laughs> are, are working with a store and you have to put in all kinds of exclusions for your cash because you don't want to be caching your checkout or your cart or anything like that because that prevents you being able to take money from people. And generally, when you have a website with a store, you want to take as much money from people as possible. Um, when you don't have caching on your store because you can't, and you start hitting the database a whole lot, then you got problems. So about the about the database uh, for WooCommerce, I, I think one thing to really think about is how WooCommerce uses the database versus a normal WordPress publishing environment. Um, I actually uh, had a chance to talk to some VIP folks uh, this week as I was uh, there for their uh, workshop, and I asked, you know, for like Time Incorporated, you know, and these people, yeah, I asked. So, um, <coughs> name drop. <laughs> I, you know, I asked, like, how uh, how often do you publish? Like, you know, and they said, well, anywhere from about ten to like forty posts a day, right? And that's that's pretty big. Um, but if you look at uh, WooCommerce, every single time you get an order, that's a that's a post, right? Yep. And so hopefully you're getting more than forty a day if you're looking at a big shop, right? And, and so you're writing to the database a whole lot more in a WooCommerce site than you are in a normal publishing site. And that's probably the biggest difference right there. And so, <laughs> and because so with it, sorry, go ahead, George. Yeah, just, just this noting on that, that a lot of different hosting providers optimize for different things. Most of the time when you go to like a $5 a month hosting prior to post your account, they're assuming you're going to be writing content, not necessarily doing that much of stuff coming in from your community. So uh, most, uh, like most sites do, so they can tune the database to be much quicker on reads and a little bit slower on writing to the database. But when you have things that are running like BBPress or BuddyPress or WooCommerce, uh, or you're getting a lot, a lot of comments, uh, they're going to be doing a lot more writes to the database. You might want to look at different hosting configurations that might optimize more for uh, efficiently handling writes to your database uh, without, uh, with less effort put on optimizing the reads. 
And so, you know, just for our audience that doesn't understand what uh, either Kevin or George just said, right? Um, <laughs> um, you know, it's not. It's, it, I was going to add to what Kevin said. It's, it's it's one thing to add posts to your to your site, right? And and what Kevin said is absolutely accurate, right? So posts, uh, WooCommerce uh, orders are posts, but along with those posts, you also have meta uh, meta um, data that's going into your database. Right? I'm trying to keep this non as non technical as possible, right? So in addition to the posts, you've got all the meta that's associated with the post. So it's not just one write that's writing a post. Right? There's several meta uh, writes that are happening to the post meta table within the uh, database as well. Right, right. So for orders, um, uh, you know, we've looked at this actually as a, as a performance uh, issue within WooCommerce itself. Um, with each order, there is around 20 or more post meta items. So, I mean, basically what that means is you're writing to that database over 20 times every time that somebody makes an order on there. Uh, and that can, uh, that can actually be a big performance problem the more you scale. Um, I would like to take a moment just to, to mention, you know, the 3.0 release, we made a pretty big change in there. And uh, so very soon, you know, we have the ability to start switching out the implementation. So you can change it. And, and what this gets is, um, you know, the bigger your site, the more money you're taking in, right? You know, the, the more opportunity you have to start building your infrastructure. And what that means now is we have the ability to start upgrading that infrastructure uh, with code. Nice. That's, that's great news. That's yeah. great news. Yeah, right. so no longer do you have to use post meta or, or the post table at all um, for your uh, orders. Um, we've we've uh, split that out to where it's possible to start doing this. Of course, now we're waiting for all of the extensions to start updating and, and supporting uh, these new things too. And part of the issue with the like post meta table. Cruddy situation. Sorry, go ahead, George. Oh, um, that sounds like a cruddy situation. Uh, part of the uh, <laughs> geek humor, part of the issue with the post meta table is, is that it's not indexed. Right. At least the the the, uh, the meta value is not indexed. So if you are doing searches against that, that that's what can cause slowdown. Is that correct? Or yeah, key. You can index it. I mean, you can index it however you want, but by default, usually it isn't. That that's correct by default. So Cosper, how does a host deal with something like this? Uh, depending on the host, uh, either very well or very poorly. Let, let, me, um, let me be more specific. How does WP Engine deal with this? <laughs> so uh, I actually spent a fair bit of time working on our optimized WooCommerce uh, hosting package. Um, what we ended up doing is we worked with um, we worked with uh, somebody who is fairly intimate with running a um, kind of high. Uh, capacity WooCommerce store, a uh, gentleman by the name of Patrick Garman. Mm -hmm. um, very knowledgeable when it comes to this sort of thing. Um, spoken, you know, at, uh, at several WordCamps. Uh, and, you know, just just really, uh, he had a fair number of optimizations, some, some kind of uh, wish list things that he ended up doing. Uh, we tuned our uh, so we did some stuff in code uh, with a plugin we installed on customer sites. We've done some stuff with um, database optimizations, uh, caching optimizations, uh, our push for um, moving uh, more customers, especially WooCommerce customers, onto PHP 7. Uh, try to, to, to push with that. Um, but um, it, it can be tricky sometimes. Um, when you are dealing with um, sort of uh, clustered situations where you uh, end up uh, having uh, multiple uh, database servers uh, and you're kind of uh, spreading those reads and writes around. Uh, if you're in a high test environment, um, you know, where, where you're just getting stuff just hammering you all the time, uh, getting those reads and writes uh, synced up can sometimes be a, a, a little tricky. Uh, it's it's not necessarily for the faint of heart. So uh, having a, a partner that is familiar with this sort of thing can definitely be helpful. So I want to expand on something you said. Uh, uh, so WP Engine has a specific WooCommerce offering. Correct. Right. So so I'm. It's a it's a special package that I really should move toward if I'm hosting on WP Engine, but I I have a store or a scale a store that I want to scale. Yeah, uh, once once you actually hit a, a particular point, um, we definitely encourage you, uh, you know, customers to. What is that benchmark? Is it? Does, does yeah, what's the point? 
Uh, the the point really depends on you know a per store basis. So, um, you know, you could be getting uh, a lot of orders, um, and you know, hopefully you are. Uh, it could be that you have a number, you have a moderate amount of orders, but you have a lot of uh, product variations. Um, say you do uh, sort of. I've, we've seen some uh, folks who have like a, like print on demand sort of um, shops where you know you can pick a, a t-shirt or whatever, uh, and you know they have a bunch of different you know shirt styles, etc. That you can print your items on things like that. Um, so. Um, you know, that may not see a, a, a high volume of orders like we were seeing with, um, with the site that Patrick was working on. Uh, he, they were getting um, millions of orders, uh, you know, every, every month, uh, the, occasionally, sometimes uh, hundreds of thousands of orders in just a day. And so, I mean, if I've got a, you know, a store that's taken, just taken off really fast, you know, I'm, I'm guilty of saying this to my clients and my friends, right? That's a good problem to have, right? Yep. It's actually not. Right? No. <laughs> right? I mean, that, you know, thinking about that, that's actually not a good problem to have because if I can't take orders, I can't make money, right? If my site's down, I can't make money. Well, and it makes you look bad because if you've worked so hard to bring someone to the site and then they try to make a purchase, they're not necessarily going to come. You have to work doubly as hard to get them to come back to the site again. So you've wasted now all of those marketing dollars and you're probably not going to get that customer back so i always make sure that people have their you know before they launch like a big marketing campaign or something like that to pull a bunch of people to the site that's a real good core time to check the infrastructure to make well, sure that it's going to withstand that potential flood but let's say you haven't done any marketing efforts right it's just you just happen to have uh, stumbled into something went viral Right. My kids are currently playing with those uh, those fidget spinners, right? That's mm -hmm. the hot thing right now, right? Right like, now. What if, what, what if I had a, a fi look, George has one. What if I had a, a fidget spinner site that I that I had last month, right? And all of a sudden it's now just taken off like a rocket. I didn't plan for it. What then? Cry? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that you can always be actually, prepared for anything, you know, right? I mean, there's there's a uh, a long time ago, there used to be a term, uh, you know, being slash dotted, right? For those of us in, you know, in that area, <laughs> oh, wow. yeah, and that, that happens ago. to anybody, right? I, I mean, you can't, uh, you can't always protect against that. You know, uh, there are times when you want to get cheap hosting for this tiny little thing that you started, um, and that's going to be true not just for a store, but really any site, I think. And let's, and, 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 um, thank you, Kevin. I think that's a great point because there's a difference between cheap hosting and inexpensive hosting. Mm -hmm. Definitely. <laughs> Yeah, and I think another thing too is, and but this is all kind of pointing out. There was there was a pause there, so I had to kind of. Yeah, that's cool. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, but um, is that so many of these store owners and so many I talk to, it's not necessarily that they're prepared. They get somebody in place, they get their site set up, and they feel like okay, things are cruising along, and whether that viral thing happens, you know, within a few days, if it's over time, things scale. They get so focused into the marketing, the selling, like say said, you know, that's what they're starting to do. So they tend to kind of not necessarily neglect that other part, but they don't have somebody in place keeping an eye to make sure things go smoothly when that stuff starts happening, unless it's all of a sudden. And they're, you know, they're not, they're, they're going to wait till somebody starts complaining. Their site goes down or customers start saying, hey, right. this is Reactive. so long. So they're not, they're not really educated in the early part enough to understand, to have those things in place, the hosting that maybe can help them scale. The people that are, you know, they might have some VA that's uploading new products, but that person isn't paying attention to all the other stuff. So there's a lot of that tech stuff that's not, I don't want to say it's being ignored, but it just kind of gets put on the back burner. They grow and then suddenly gets put on the front burner again. I think that's also the reason that you're seeing, um, I'm seeing, I don't know about you guys, but I'm seeing a, a definite uptick in people who do start starting off in things like Squarespace because they don't have to even think about that. So if, if you know, they don't have to think about moving servers or choosing a site that they're paying more for while they're scaled down here. And I think that's actually a lot of the problem for these stores is because of that unintentional scale or be 
uh, unknown scale, a lot, a lot of times, honestly, people have to literally switch servers in, in order to go to a higher end host. And that's a problem for them just in terms of like flow, especially if it's when they're like getting a bunch of stuff, but their store's crapping out because they have crappy hosting server even within the same host. Um, so that's definitely something that's causing the um yeah i mean switching hosts and switching servers and hosting companies is one thing but <laughs> when you have to switch cms's as well at the same time because you got locked into something like squarespace that can be a nightmare and a half i mean something i mean i i completely agree oh, for people who are just starting out um squarespace can be a very attractive uh solution because it's just set it and forget it but the thing is is that you know, just as you would have like with a brick and mortar store, you can't just like hand over the keys to your shop to somebody and then just be like, all right, dudes, y'all on your own. Um, you have to kind of keep checking on it and make sure that things are, are running the way that they should. Um, and, you know, a solution like Squarespace, you know, that definitely works for a lot of situations. But when you need a customized anything, really, um, uh, the, that's when you know WordPress and and WooCommerce really becomes the the solution that you need. Yeah, I mean, I compare a lot of this stuff to the real world for especially for folks who who don't they're not tech savvy, but they understand how a business works. So it's like the idea of having a larger parking lot so that way more people can park their cars to be able to get into your business. And do you have a squeaky door that that takes a little while for the door to open for people to actually get into the store? Is the you know are the uh, the the lanes that the uh, the various store um, offerings are in? are smaller so it makes it hard to get through when other people are walking through as well like you have all of this kind of real world type situation stuff that you can look at it and say oh i need a faster web host maybe i need to move my location to a whole separate location um i need a, a i need dub double doors instead of a single door because um, we just can't get enough people into the room at the exact same time. And then, by the way, I only have one cashier. I, I need to have more cashiers so that way we can get people in and out faster. Yeah. Man, sometimes if you have a more scalable web host, it can just be like, oh, I need more floor space retail. All right. I can get the lot next to me as well, break down the wall between them and just expand my sales area as opposed to needing to pack everything up and move down the street somewhere else. Yeah. Like yeah. I think it's really important for people with online stores not to feel or, or you know, not, not to feel intimidated by the idea that, you know, all of these ones and zeros and server hardwares and things like this are things that they don't understand because all the principles are pretty much the same, you know, mm -hmm. online or offline. Yep. Except they're up at 24 hours a day and you don't have to have somebody at the register, um, you know, keeping the lights on and making sure that things are working correctly. Yes, the, the uh, internet gnomes take care of all of that. Exactly. I think it's a really good point, you know, the before you do a big marketing push, uh, you know, to go and, and check out and see if you have the capacity that you need. Just like in a normal store, right, you wouldn't start a whole new marketing campaign if you didn't have floor space for it, right? So, I mean, just really quick, um, as we are coming about five minutes to the end, let's do a quick round the room and see uh, if you had one tip, one thing to recommend folks do just to, so they will scale better when that big hit comes. I mean, my recommendation is always to make sure you have your images loading from a CDN uh, so you can have a uh, so your web server can focus more on the actual HTML and the important stuff there so uh, it's not being bogged down with loading your product images all the time. I mean, we found with Jetpack that folks sites that are using Photon can handle about double the number of concurrent visitors as if they weren't using a CDN. So that's something that really can help your site scale quickly in the event of a large glot of traffic. All right, I'll go next. Uh, yeah. choose, choose a host that you can grow with, right? So choose a host where you can so, start small and then scale up and, and it has the capacity to grow, uh, you know, large with you. That's what I say what Steve says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I was going to, I was going to say hosting as well um, because a good host is going to have the support network in place where you can be like, hey, I don't actually know what I need right now. This is what I'm looking at. Help me. So like my fidget spinner store took off and I need some help. I'd say uh, in, in line with that, use the right tool for the job. Make sure that your host knows that you're running a WooCommerce site on there and not just a you know low traffic blog posting sort of thing. 
I would say actually that my real thing is more about something that's more what we what we talk about a lot, which is that um, if you are, if you are planning to launch a store, instead of just launching something willy nilly, you know, really do the work to figure out which direction it is going, because then you can choose the right place. If you're just you know planning the next six months in advance, you don't you're not necessarily going to make the right choices for where you're going to end up in a year and a half. And the likelihood is, is no one's going to be changing their site completely in six months. You want to give yourself a little bit of lead time. So planning ahead would be mine. Yeah. And at the last minute, don't get some, don't get some good analytics in place. Figure out what people are doing while they're there, even though that isn't necessarily a technical issue. It is a speed issue, making sure people can get and they're going to the right spot. Yeah, to kind of piggyback off of what Bob said is um, use something like Hotjar or something like that where you're able to kind of watch and see how people are interacting on your site. And it's just like looking at the uh, CCT cameras in your in your store. You're looking and saying, why does this person keep getting stuck in this one area of the store? And why aren't they able to actually get out of the place and be able to check out? So look at that. And Hotjar is some pretty good stuff to be able to figure those things out. Yeah, going back to what Say said about uh, planning ahead, uh, planning ahead is incredibly important, especially when it comes to um, doing um, effectively load testing. I am a very big proponent of seeing uh, what your actual site is uh, does under under fire, under like real world, real life traffic. Um, you can actually do that ahead of time uh, if you plan appropriately. I did a talk at uh, WordCamp San Diego this year. Uh, about uh, doing just that, and I'll make sure to, to get that link over to Jason to get in the show notes. That was uh, a, a great talk. <laughs> I like to hear that. Yeah, awesome. But, any any final words of wisdom we should uh, we should share before we close out? Uh, if you <laughs> have a, Wo a WooCommerce store and it is and it is your business, um, invest in it like it's your business. Uh, even though all of this stuff is open source and relatively inexpensive, um, don't let that limit you in terms of how you think about the financial investment that you place in it. An, an inexpensive host is different from a cheap host. <laughs> and if you're making money from it, especially if it's your main business income or your client's main business income, it is worth that investment. That's the engine. It's the thing that's making the money, so you have to put the money in. To get spend, the money out. Spend money to make money. Mm -hmm. It's not rocket science. Mm -mm. Or rocket surgery. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome, folks. Well, thank you very much for all of you being on the show today. We really appreciate it. Um, if you enjoyed this particular content and you want to get it on a regular basis, you can subscribe to it. Go over to wqrcore.com slash subscribe, and you can subscribe to all the things that we do here on this show and the two other shows that we have on the WQ Watercore Network. So go check those out. I shall see you on Thursday. That's our next show, and that's WP Blab. Talk to you all later. Bye -bye. WP Watercooler Network. Bye. <laughs> it cracks me up every time. I love it. <laughs> All right, guys. See you later. Bye-bye.